between 10 to 3 is the ideal time for grazing because if you can do this, it is one of the managemental strategies where you can, because as I mentioned, they are positively phototropic only for mild sunlight, not the bright sunlight. So early in the morning or the late in the evening, they should be avoided for grazing. And then uh, breeding, it, it, it is a long-term process. Uh, it is uh, managemental issues that has to be taken care of by the government itself. In sheep, there are few breeds like Goral, Munzal breed, and Koimatur breed of sheep. They have a high uh, level of parasitic resistance. That's what inclusion, it is a government policy. Uh, it is a long-term process, but can be included in the uh, management of gantational parasites. And then parasite uh, trapping fungi are there. Um, the commonly used parasitic trap of fungi is Duddingtona flograns, which belong to the group of nematophagous fungi. That means the, we feed on the nematodes. So, so what it does, it can be mixed with uh, supplement and the daily administration dose for a few periods, wherever the endemicity is there as far as the gastrointestinal nematodes are there. Because when they, when they gain entry into the host animal, they trap the nematode, the egg laying activity, they get tampered. And then sometimes there is a possibility that they, that they can be expelled as it is in the feces also. That can be employed. And then Bioverma, uh, it is also a commercially available product, not in India. In the foreign countries, it is being used for the management of exclusively gastrointestinal nematodes. It can be given as a feed additive. And the spot drenching system is a concept nowadays. If, say, for example, if there is a sheep farm, there are 100 sheep are there. Uh, all the animals are not in requirement of uh, dosing. So what we do, whenever we go there, we, we suggest the owner to deworm all the animals at a time. So that is not a criteria nowadays. Smart drenching system is a concept. So this was started with Famaka Chan. Uh, Famaka, it is a name derived from a, a scientist called Dr. Papa Mellon. He devised this chart. It is commonly called as anemia chart. The problem is that it, is, it holds good only for Humongous cantatus, which is the most uh, uh, dangerous uh, nematode parasite as far as the small ruminant is concerned. It holds good only for Hemonchus contratus. He has defined a five point chart. That means based on the eyelid, you can open the lower eyelid of sheep and the goat, you can compare this chart. Like one, two, three, four, five are there. The first, it will be red in color, eyelid will be red in color. It is not in a requirement of dosing. Whereas the second case, it is almost reddish to pink in nature. Here also the animals are not in requirement of uh, dosing. Whereas third case, it is started with the pinkish. So it is in the borderline. It is left with the veterinarian to decide whether to go for the dosing or not. And then pinkish white, you have to dose the animals or else animal is going to die within a month or two. The last case, it is almost whitish. Even if you give the dosing also, it is fatal. It is left to the uh, veterinarian to decide. It is a five point check. This was designed in South Africa. Uh, CSWR Avikanagar also divide this chart. It is available on the website. I thought of having a uh, color printout. I, I could not do it. Maybe tomorrow I can give. But it is available in the website, CSWRA website. It is designed for the Indian condition. Whenever you plan for small ruminant dosing, a small drenching system, you can follow this. Because Imancus, that is the most pathogenic one because it will suck, as I mentioned, 0 0.05 ml per worm is the blood loss as far as this Imancus contactus is concerned. So you have to go for the five hours as far as the dosing system is concerned. You have to. Uh, select the right product. That is very important because the parasite which is present, uh, commonly present in Karna, Shimoga may not be present in Belga. So the regional deworming schedules you should have. So uh, the right product selection is very important. The right animal, to which animal you have to give, right dosage, right time, right dosage rate and the right way to administration. This also matters a lot. Because when you, when you give, so when a owner comes, he will ask for some syrup, he can, can, he can so less, a suspension he can give easily. But tablet, if you can give, no, he will, he will mix with some jaggery and all those things. What quantity goes in, what quantity comes out, it's a little difficult to manage. So proper dosing is also very, very important as far as the management of these nematodes are concerned. So next we'll move to the arthropods. Arthropods, when they do present, a lot of these are the few images uh, where uh, the damaging effects caused by even the hematobia fly, which is a harm fly, and then uh, um, some of the musca flies, even when they are uh, hypoderma flies, when they are more in number, there is a possibility of development of self-inflicted injuries, the skin damage will be there, and a lot of production loss, as I mentioned D1. So there is a study uh, conducted uh, that uh, when the flies are present on the body of animal, the animal will wag its tail. So in that, there is energy loss. In that time, the animal has avoided the feed intakes. So that study has also come up. So that is the 
uh, level it is going up. So arthropods, it is an annoyance. Even when, when a fly comes now, if you are doing something, our concentration diverted towards that. So that is the problem with these arthropods. So control of arthropod, uh, WHO in the year 2014, the mention protect yourself from vector borne diseases, small bite, big threat. So even the WHO level itself is thinking because uh, nowadays you can cure any of the cancerous diseases and all those things, but in the coming days the major problem will be vector borne diseases. You take in the human in the human beings or in the animal plant of if so vector borne diseases. So management of vector is very, very important. So integrated management of uh, uh, these arthropods is uh, very important nowadays. So these are the chemical controlled, uh, as you all are aware. Uh, so delta methrin, we, we do suggest delta methrin, cypermethrin, nowadays flumethrin has come. So ivermectin has gone, doramectin has gone, now the moxidectin has come. So something like that every, every year. So in the olden days, in the 20 years back, for a drug to develop resistance, it used to take 10 years. Nowadays, within two years, the drug is getting resistance because of the use of overuse. I can, I can say overuse or abuse. So it is not... Uh, it is, not, it is not in our own because over the counter medicines is a, is a problem in our veterinary field that, uh, that is a little difficult to manage. So, in, uh, this, uh, this is, this is uh, accountable mainly for the management of house fly, that is, musca fly, very specifically in the poultry form. So, these are the immuno growth, immo, sorry, insect growth regulators, like methoprin is a commonly used insect growth regulator. It can be give, given as a prebiotic or premix in the poultry feed. So for example, 1% is the rate, 50 gram in one ton of feed if you can mix. What it does now, as it is, along with the feed, it is droppings, it is passed in the droppings. In the droppings, in the manure, it will avoid the larvicidal effect. It is, it will avoid the development of uh, maggot of the larvae of housefly. So that is the uh, use of this insect growth regulator. And then a lot of biological uh, uh, products have been tested and tried and they have given the good result in the in vitro. In vivo work is, is going on. So Bavaria Beziana and Metarhizium anasifloi are the two very important because these are all the self-propagating, self-propagating uh, fungi. If you can just throw a 10 gram, it will grow on its own. So it is having a very good effect uh, in killing the ticks because since it is a biological agent, it is not having any of the um, detrimental effect on the body of the host animal. And then biological agents, apart from, uh, since there is increasing cost of chemical control, biological control along with use of chemical management will, uh, will help in the cost effective way also. And then, so whenever a tick is there, this is the way it will be present. So on the grass blades, it will be having four pair of legs, three legs it will be attaching with the grass and the two legs it will be waiting. So that is called as host seeking behavior. So whenever any host passes by, it will get attached. So this majority of the tick will be having this. This is called as active or passive host seeking behavior. So another one is there which is common in uh, Malnad area that is hemophysalis. It is having a uh, active host seeking behavior. It can go up to few meters, 100 meters or 300 meters in, in finding a suitable host because when a monkey dies, so the blood feeding will not be possible. It will leave that host and it will come. It can get attached to the cattle which has gone for grazing. It will come back again while milking. It gets attached with the human being. When the nymphal stages bites the human being, there is a possible transmission of KFT. So, so this is the way they get attached. So we do suggest rare, uh, rearing uh, Styloxanthus cabra, huh? which is a perennial grass, uh, which is having uh, detrimental effect on tick because whenever it tries to climb onto the grass blades, it produces a sort of sticky substance where it will immobilize this stick. So this can be suggested whenever a good form is there nearby, if there is a space, you can suggest a rearing of this styloxanthus crabba because it can be used for the food also as a, for the animals, for feeding animals. Styloxanthus crabba is having a good, but it is one of the botanological, uh, biological control agent can be employed in the management of tricks. The cracks and crevices should be avoided in the, in the form. It is a little difficult to say, but uh, nevertheless, because if we delta methrin, if, if you dose, if, if, we, if I treated the animal with butax, in the same shed you will uh, tie the animal. The problem with us, in the night time, between uh, after 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock, they will come out for taking blood meal, the female ticks, and then after 12 o'clock, they get hide in the cracks and crevices or the, in the major places, wherever the spaces are there. A single tick will lay about uh, 10,000 eggs, at least 10,000 eggs, 
at least you can uh, say 75 percent hatching means 7500 larvae can be produced from a single tick. So, that is the problem even a single tick it is detrimental in the transmission of several diseases. And then a tick vaccine it will not uh, it the work is going on they have identified the in Chennai and Iwara they have identified the uh, dominant uh, uh, polypeptide which is uh, suitable for vaccine candidate. Uh, but it is yet to uh, popularized. These are the two vaccines which are available in the foreign, one in Australia, one in Cuba. And then protozoan parasite, I will discuss only two, three parasites which can be of useful for you. So, bovine neosporosis is an aspect uh, which is coming up in nowadays that I want all of you should know because this is a parasite, it was confused with Toxoplasma gondii till 1984. So, after the 1984, it has been categorized subtly as Neospora caninum the definitely host is dog, but it is causing major problem in cattle where there will be abortion in the second trimester, very specifically second trimester abortion is seen in Neospora caninum infection. So, dog acts as a definitely host and then capable of sending oocysts uh, in the feces and then uh, intermediate host such as cattle. So, whenever the feces uh, which is contaminated with uh, all of feed and the water which is contaminated with dog feces having Neospora caninum, there is a possibility of developing infection only in the pregnant animal it enters through the transplacental route and it, it may cause abortion in the six, 4 to 6 months age, very specifically midterm uh, uh, pregnancy abortion will be there. So, symptoms in dog, uh, very common in the dogs of less than uh, 6 months age group, stiffness in the pelvic limbs and then paralysis which is distinguished by a gradual muscle atrophy will be there. Then there will be a progressing rigid contracting limbs will be there. So, this is a video which is uh, taken which is uh, the dog which is infected with Neospora caninum. So, there will be complete hind limb paralysis will be there. <laughs> so, there is a vaccine for cattle. Because Toxoplasma gondii, the definitely host is cat, it can be present in any animal. All the warm blooded animals, including human beings, are at risk, but major pathogenic effect is caused only in sheep, where it will cause storms of abortion. So, there is a vaccine only for sheep. In the, in the similar case, also, even though definitely host is dog, they have prepared the vaccine only for cattle. Neogard is the vaccine which is available uh, for the, you can, uh, you can give in the pregnancy also. Neospora, Neogard is the vaccine. Then coccidiosis in cattle, quite often we get confused with a regular parasitic infection. If you give albendazole, it will, it will not take care of this parasite, uh, uh, this protozoan parasite. Coccidia, basically it disease, uh, uh, it is our more, of, uh, more of winter coccidiosis is very common in a, in a country like India, where uh, most of the animals will spend their time during the rainy season or the winter season in the shed only, where there is a lot of urination there the moisture content will be more because correlation of oocysts require oxygen. So, this uh, winter is a season which is more uh, common where the uh, coccidiosis is seen. Then uh, more often this there will be watery uh, feces will be there and then bloody diarrhea, bloody diarrhea uh, with streaks or clots of blood. Sometimes there is a possibility of shredding of uh, epithelium or the mucus directly in the feces that can, can account for coccidian infection in cattle. So, sulfa drug and the amprolium are the drugs of choice. Sulfa is fine enough, sulfa trimethoprim, it is fine enough to manage this coccidi coccidiosis. Cryptospodius, uh, it is, it is an again Im immunocompromised sort of infection, very common in uh, young animals, even in the human beings, it is less than 3 month old or at high risk because at that time the immunity of a host will be, or in the, in the human beings, it is very common in the patient who have undergone the treatment for cancer, immunotherapy, sorry, sorry chemotherapy. So, whenever the immunity goes down, this parasite will, will take a, will take upper hand and establish itself in the animals. And then for uh, uh, human beings or even the cattle, uh, antibiotics because it is not there is not proper treatment is available. Uh, the toxoplasma treatment what you give like clindamycin, halophagin and lactate will take care of this uh, cryptosporidiosis infection, very specifically in young animals are at high risk. Then bovine babesiosis, uh, nothing new here. Uh, so, it is a tick borne disease, then all the clinical signs uh, you might have uh, known by this time, coffee colored urine, bloody diarrhea, sorry, uh, uh, coffee colored urine, 
And then there's few of the times there is a possibility that uh, development of cerebral uh, babesiosis. That is also feasibility is there whenever the uh, neurological science can also be appreciated. But based on the tick presence of tick, uh, to not that a tick bite of last three months, within last three months can account for the development of babesiosis. That also you have to be little careful because when the animal brings you animal, so owner brings to you the animal, the ticks may not be there on the body of the animal. You can ask the history of last three, four months. That is also feasible. <coughs> The Berenil, as you know, that is a, the imidocorp is, is giving good result. When, even for the anaplasma also, you can use this imidocorp. It has given good results in the parts of difference. Whenever we, we give a report, we have taken the suggestion from the doctor. They, they said imidocorp has given a good result, even for the anaplasma also. Bovine tropical thyloriasis, this is quite misleading. Um, uh, till few days, uh, we, have, we have encountered the presence of thyloria orientalis. Uh, bovine traffic, this is very common in India. Thyloria annulata is this protozoan species which is accounting for this. So, hyloma is a tick uh, which is a long restraint. Based on the mouth part also you can say small mouth parts, babesia, so bophilus that is babesiosis whereas lymph node enlargement and the presence of a tick which is having a long mouth parts. So, that you can directly you can confirm it as an hyloma. Uh, then a fever will be there that you all know. Then buparocon is the proper drug of charge or any parocon derivative. Then control, so management of control, so, so this any hemoprotozoan for that matter, the main source of infection is the vector. So management of ticks or vector becomes uh, very important. Even the Raksha VACT is available, uh, the vaccine is available. A few days back, we, one of the person has come here, so they are thinking of because the problem with the uh, Thailand Raksha VACT is there, you have to report it, and you have to get it done. Uh, and so that, that is the status of affairs. Nowadays, they said if it is a reported or positive reports also, if you want, they can supply. That is the, in that mode they are thinking nowadays. So, thyroidia, oriental thyloriosis, uh, is nowadays it is more often less a, a sort of subclinical sort of infection is there. Thyloria orientalis is a species. It is <coughs> violated here because it is a emerging, emerging tick-borne diseases uh, in cattle and buffaloes. Hemophysalis is the tick here, the tick which is responsible, one of the tick responsible for cave.